Hey now, Mike Shipman here, and I'm going to show you how to put products into Gravity Forms right now. But first, guys, I need you to hit the like button and subscribe, and then stick around to the very end, because I'm going to show you the exact product form I have on my website, and that's making me money right now. Hey now, Mike Shipman here, and today I'm just going to do a tutorial on Gravity Forms, on how to sell a product via Gravity Forms. So there's a few different ways that you can do it. It's going to depend on whether you're using a physical product or a digital product, on kind of what path you want to go. But let's just start with a regular form. You would do something like name, phone number, their email address. And one of the things that's going to depend upon is if you want to capture their address or not. If this is just a digital product, you probably don't need their address. But if you're sending something to them, you're going to want to put their address in there. All right. And there's all sorts of options that you can select here for what type of address you need and uh, if it's international, Canadian, United States. But there's a lot of uh, options there that you can go through. All right, this is just going to be a basic on how you can insert a product in here. So once you get that information, I should say, if you are delivering a digital product, you may want to capture a username and a password if you're sending them to a members area. So you can send them to a members area uh, using uh, WooCommerce memberships. You can send them to a, a Ultimate Memberships Pro membership, wherever you want to send them to you can send them to, but uh, you just need the username and password fields added in. So now we get down to the pricing fields. There is a product field right here, and this is where you're gonna enter your product in. Whatever that product is, you just come down here, select what your product is, enter your amount. All right, and if you have a, multiple products, you can do this multiple times. You can do a drop down, and I'll present options to you, and you just enter your options in here. So if there's one, more than one choice, so choice one, two, and three. All right, you just enter that in there, and it'll create a drop down. All right, you can also do a hidden field if you want it to be hidden, and just uh, charge ninety-seven dollars with a total amount. And I should say we should put the total amount down here. This total amount will calculate how much your products total. All right. And now you're going to need some way to capture payment for this, for your product. So there's a number of different options that you can use for this. So if I go back to my Gravity Forms add-ons here, I'm using a couple different pro, uh, uh, form options for payment gateways. There is an authorized.net, which is a popular one for bigger accounts. All right, and then there's other ones as well. There's Stripe, there's uh, PayPal. All right, I also have my Get Response Connected. So whenever they fill this form out, say that say you want this form to be filled out, and you want it to capture their email address with uh, an autoresponder, you just want to start building your list, this is where you would do that at. Or you wouldn't do that right here, but you just go to Settings, and you, mine is Get Response, and I click that here, and I set up a feed for my email account. So every time somebody adds on, gets the product, they're added to my email account. Here's where I have the uh, PayPal add-ons, so you can easily add those, and then uh, Stripe as well. These are all the add-ons that you can add there, but I just wanted to show them to you so you know that if it is working with your payment gateway or not. All right, it's all fresh books on there as well. Um, so you want to set up your payment gateway, and what I do is since I have Stripe activated, I just go to Stripe card, and I can put this wherever I'd like, usually at the bottom. All right, and then right there, they would enter their their card on the screen. All right. If you need ca tax calculated, you can do tax as well. And one of the things I was uh, referring to as well as one of the difference between a physical and a digital product is if you want to charge shipping, you can just do that. Add a shipping uh, field. All right. And this will this won't calculate the shipping. This will let you charge for shipping though. Okay, so if you just wanted to indicate to the customer that you're charging $5 shipping, then you can do it right there. Now, what you could do instead of that is just include that price with the product and that and leave the shipping field blank. So it would just be, you know, $97 and I include shipping. But you would, just, like I said, you need to capture their address. And then what happens is once you capture their address, it's sent to you via confirmation or notification and um, via email and you get this form in your email and it's a nice little form and uh, it's all nice for you and you get that there and now you need to connect your credit card or your stripe account to your form okay so you just go to settings and stripe 
or PayPal Payments Pro or PayPal. And you go through the setup of just connecting your account, which requires you to have an API key, which is very, very easy. You just click on the link there and it does the documentation. But you set up your uh, payment gateway there. All right, if you want to do a discount, you can do discount codes. You can do coupon codes. You can do a number of different things. Um, if it's a if it's a product, more than one can be ordered. You can do the quantity tab there. All right, and like I say, you just want to make sure you have that total option right there, and you want to make sure you have your payment gateway set up. Now, if you did want to do something a little bit more sleek, what you could do is something called conditional logic. So, say you don't want this address box to show if they're buying your digital product. You just go down here, and you can go to advanced and enable conditional logic and go ahead and check out my conditional logic tutorial if you want to learn more about conditional logic so once you get that done if you need them to upload something you can also add an upload button there but once you get that done and put in place there you just go to update and i've actually inserted this form already right here to a page and i'm just going to go reload and here's the form that we just made and there's address and there's the total for our product that we put in there okay now if you want to do something like maybe you want to do like a one check upsell you can do that too. Let me show you right now how to do that. If I just go here to pricing fields and I go to option, all right, and I'll just put below the total there. And I go to the drop down, and maybe I just want to do it'll let you do product mapping. So maybe you have a different product that you can link it to. You can do that. But say this is just a, a, a different uh, product or a different item, just go to the, the check boxes there and go, you know, this one is yes i want product two all right and then you know whatever the price is 27 dollars. all right and that's it and then you'd put your description right down here of whatever it is all right and then you just hit update so now if i go back to my form hit refresh all right yes i want product two just hit that and then it automatically does product two right there and then again, this is where you're doing your card details. And if you, this was hooked up to your Stripe account or your PayPal account, you would see those options right here. And like I said, if you did want to activate them, you go to the back. Now, once you have your product, you need it somewhere to send them. So where after they hit this submit button, where do they go? Well, that's up for you to decide. What you need to do is you need to go back into your settings and you need to go to uh, notifications if you want a notification to be sent with you, but you need to go to actually confirmations. All right, and then you just want to go to edit the confirmation right here, and you want to go to wherever you want it. So maybe you just hit submit and you just have a message that says thank you, all right? So if you're doing a physical product, you need to say thank you. All right, and here, here's uh, here's the product, or, or you know, we're, we'll be with touch with you shortly, whatever it wants to be. If you're doing a digital product, you could send them to a thank you message here, and it could have a download link inserted here. You can also send them to a page. All right, so maybe maybe they buy a product and you want to upsell them on another product. Then you'd select, you'd make another gravity form with a product, put that on a separate page, and then you'd select that page from here. All right, maybe you want to redirect them to a different URL after they purchase your product. Then you just put that information there. Uh, one of the things you can do as well is you can just send them to a different page and you can deliver a product via email if you capture their email if you're doing a digital product. That's what I usually do is I send them via email. Hey, here's a link to the download area, the membership area. They click on that and they go to the membership area, activate their account, and it's passed along that way. If you're doing a, something like a free opt-in, you're going to want to send via email. So they go to their email, click your email, and open it and download the product via your download page. This is one that I have on my page right now. All right, just my real course checkout right here. And they're sending an email with a account creation and a credit card number there. And once that's entered in, they're redirected to a different page. But uh, that's how it works. I hope you guys got some value out of this video. I hope you guys can sell some products now. I'm trying to think if there's anything else that we need to go over. If you want to go to the back of your form, go to form settings. And this is where you can change the button text if you like, right back here. Maybe you have a longer form. You can check out my multiple step form tutorial. But you can go to the save and continue if you want to store their information. There's also some disclaimer there about storing information with all the stuff that's going on with GDPR or, or GDPR or everything with that.
So uh, you may not want to store that, but that's up to you if it's a longer application form or something maybe. Uh, and then there's all these other options on spam and stuff like that. Although I don't really have a problem with spam when I hook it to my get response. But you want to go through those settings and make sure they're correct. That's how you do a form. That's how you do a product. So I hope you guys got some value out of this video. Go ahead and like and subscribe. And I'll see you on the next video.